Hey, everybody, it's CJ Graham. That's right, Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th, Part 6, and you're listening to Breaking the Fourth Wall. Especially since I'm no fucking Hollywood writer or <laughs> fan fiction writer. What is up, guys? Welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall Weekly. I am Christopher Stolle, and of course, I am joined with my gaggle of giggles. First and foremost, the Tickle Me Elmo of the group, Mr. Don Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, kid sister, uh, Serenity. <laughs> the living, uh, the t- the living. What, what what was the name of the bear that you stuck the tape, uh, the the cassette tapes into? That was uh, that was Teddy, Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah, Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> so, you know, she she's a Teddy Ruxpin with a uh, Ozzy Osbourne uh, album in her belly, Miss Wren. Oh. <laughs> and now gender neutral potato head, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sweet, Chris. <laughs> i can't say what is he gonna be special come on <laughs> you know how hard it is to come up with some of these intros on the fly sometime i just made you oh, all yeah. boys oh yeah i i get it i i have i have <laughs> taken off on i have taken off on some intros that just fell so flat and it's like yep yeah, that sucked let's move on <laughs> <laughs> story of this show <laughs> we are not that's, scripted. that's actually what we should call it it's no longer breaking the fourth walls yep that sucks let's move on <laughs> maybe the name of this episode right away <laughs> the, we're, we're all feeling it we're all feeling it but i can tell you this much we always get our titles for the episodes usually from our next segment that is the news buffet with mr don smith i am hoping so i i always hope to get uh to get episode titles from this because that's 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 a a, a, that's a standard for me so we're going to go ahead and get started welcome to the news buffet this is always a good time <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry i almost made it through that uh the california highway patrol said a driver using the high occupancy vehicle lanes of the highway was found to be actually traveling alone except he had one of his best dummies the police had ever seen Uh, The California Highway Patrol said an officer stationed in Baldwin Park pulled over a truck traveling in the HOV lane on Wednesday because the vehicle's windows were tended too dark for the officers officers to see if the driver had a passenger. The officer (laughs) soon discovered the apparent man uh, sitting in the passenger seat, which I guess we can still say man, I don't know. Uh, the truck was actually a uh, a potato. No, actually a highly realistic, <laughs> highly yeah, realistic mannequin. <laughs> a highly realistic mannequin complete with COVID-19 face mask. Uh, the nice. California Highway Patrol said the mannequin was by far one of the best dummies we've ever seen. I don't buy that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the, the California Highway Patrol. They, they right. <laughs> walk in in the morning. Right. I, I think Eric Estrada was probably one of the best dummies I've ever seen. <laughs> the sad part is you said Eric, Eric Estrada, and the first thing that popped in my head was uh, Wilmer Valderrama and fucking that 70s show for some reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very similar. I can definitely see the confusion on that. <clears throat> But no, pe- people have been doing this for years, riding in the high occupancy lanes with the, with a dummy in the passenger seat. And I say, why not? If they're clever enough, right? Uh, I mean, I'm I. I don't know if I'm sad by that story, laughing at the absurdity of the story, or applauding the genius. <laughs> of I the would story. go with the latter. You yeah, know, yeah. this is L.A. and traffic sucks. You could go one mile in an hour i mean seriously if you have one of those lanes freaking use it just like a guy between his legs if you got it you got to use it 
<laughs> and we do often, and then we get picked off for doing it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's better than S South Florida. There's a high occupancy vehicle lane, and I've never seen a passenger in a car driving in that son of a bitch. When I li when I lived in South Florida, nobody they, they didn't care, and it was clearly <laughs> marked. You had to have at least two people in the car. They didn't give a shit. They were they were doing what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> it was South Florida. They were going 95 miles an hour, and they probably were 95 years old, so it didn't matter. So you're saying somebody was bent over in the passenger seat uh, having their early bird special? Very well could have been. Hey. Dude, it's you a 95-year-old. Come on. Hey, hey, they make Viagra for exactly that reason. That's why, <laughs> that's why retirement homes have so much STDs these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know Don's golden cock? That's the, that's the uh, golden age cock right there. I'm exactly. <laughs> there it is, folks. The golden cock. The Life Radio Show's coveted golden cock. Chris Stolle wants it. <laughs> His mouth is watering over this cock right now. He's <laughs> got 17 different herbs and spices. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to throw out a congratulations since we're on the news anyway. Scotty Mays, congratulations on your technical win. <laughs> I think that was technical premature. Knockout. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? We have to have more than a carpool lane. I was going to tell the story of my next door my next door neighbor when I was growing up, Zelda. She came over one day cuz she drove to downtown Dayton a lot and she didn't want to be by herself. So we have an 85-year-old woman came over and asked my dad if she, he could blow up her sex doll so that she could put it in a suit and set it in the passenger seat. <laughs> I was 11 and even I thought that's fucked up. <laughs> The worst part is he got in an accident and all, all anybody saw was a shock look on the doll's face. Yeah, exactly. They got her pulled over. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we've all seen it. Yeah. And that's why Don got in the comedy. What's that? That's why Don got into comedy. Exactly. That, it was that look. That's what got me my first gig. It's like, I'll do it. But anyway. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see your expressions, Don. What's the first expression going to use? I'll use the O face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pol police in Illinois said they're trying to find the owner of a belligerent and foul smelling guinea fowl found wandering loose in town. Uh, the Swansea Police Department posted a photo to Facebook of what the department misidentified as a missing chicken, but commenters pointed out it was actually a missing guinea fowl. Uh, quote, loud, belligerent, non-cooperative, foul-smelling, won't leave. They were actually talking about <laughs> they were talking about the guinea fowl, not an ex-spouse. Uh, the department is asking anyone missing a guinea fowl to get in touch with the, the uh, police to claim their bird. Wait, so what's the bird's name, AOC? <laughs> yeah, let's get political. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't political. I was just pointing out something that's foul and won't leave. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You, well, you could have gone Pelosi. You, there's all kinds of... You could have <laughs> oh, gone, time, you five, gone Mitch... You could have gone Mitch McConnell with that fucking excuse. You're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. If I wanted to get political and everything else, I could have attacked Pelosi. I could have attacked Schumer. I could have attacked uh, McConnell. I could have attacked any one of them. But the problem is, is they're all on death's door. Death will handle that eventually. <laughs> AOC is young enough to stay around forever. That's true. That's true. That's true. That <laughs> I want to nip the problem in the butt while it's young. <laughs> I, I've seen her. I'd nip that. Yeah, until, uh, until them crazy eyes and horse teeth come out. You just, you just got to know how to avoid them. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, what you, is a fucking guinea fowl? I don't even know what a guinea fowl is. It's a bird. Is that, is that, that, is that a like, fucking bird? It's, 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 you never seen a guinea fowl? Like? What's it look like? Does it look like that Momo figure that was going around a couple of years ago? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It, it kind of looks like a wild turkey, and I'm not talking about the drink. Ooh, but that'd be. I'm fun. talking about the actual wild turkey. It, it kind of looks similar to that. It's smaller. It's it's a game bird. It's a you can hunt guinea fowl. It's a game. Does it have balls hanging off its neck? <laughs> I mean, I didn't get that personal with it. It might have. <laughs> I mean, like. Well, that's I a callback. Chicken, you know. Loose turkey net penis. Well, they're black. <laughs> the fowls are black. They have a brightly colored head, and they're 
kind of skinny and they have a very long sort of shape to them. They're very good at eating ticks. All right, there we go. That's what it looks like a guinea farm. <laughs> a guinea farm close by. Do we want to share the picture of the guinea fowl? That way we know the exact one that we're looking for. This one's not black, it's gray. It's why, gray. Gotta be, why would you point out whether it was black or not? Well, like you said, you're a racist. I just hey. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <But> there, <laughs> there there is our there is our guinea fowl. It is it's gray. It's it's, it's it a, looks a, like it looks like a frozen fucking turkey from Thanksgiving still in the wrapper. He's kind of cute. And you left it out too long. If it turns gray like that, don't eat it. <laughs> All right, now that you've done that, I'll share I'll share what a real one looks like. Hold on. I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm allowed to screen share here. I, I, oh, I think disabled. You, you have to you have to enable me to be able to, to share. I did that on purpose because we're God. spending way too much time on a fucking guinea fowl. <laughs> but I want to show the guinea fowl. Okay. Come on. He has if to choke a... his chicken. <laughs> I have to choke my chicken. If my chicken looked like this, I'd be choking it every day. Trust me. <laughs> like you don't already. I do, but people don't need to know. There you go. There's the actual game. Oh my god, I'm a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought to myself when you were gonna do this, I thought if this is a picture of AOC, I'm gonna <laughs> and here it is. It is a fucking picture of AOC right there. All right, get that shit off the screen. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my god. Uh, okay. <laughs> Every time you now close you... your eyes, that image is going to be emblazoned. In the back of your eyelids. Yeah, viewer discretion advised. <laughs> I guess I guess I'm not allowed to screen share any more of this episode. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to put a warning up here if we're going to do that crap. A 66 year old, a 66 year old Irish man plunged into freezing waters and swam for a mile to claim a Guinness World Record as the oldest oldest ice mile swimmer. Uh, Ger Purcell of Corbali Limerick said he was, which I don't know what any of those words mean, uh, wow. said he trained for several months to swim in frigid waters and he broke the record during the Ice Mile Challenge at the Shannon Rowing Club in Limerick. He went in, in rules, and Ger, that, that water rules stated the swim had to be done continuously without any breaks and the water temperature had to be verified as below 23 degrees. If water temperature is below 23 degrees, it's fucking ice. I will, I will repeat, uh, if, if, if that water was as cold as they claim it was cold, when he went in, he was girt, but when he came out, he was girt up. Oh, yeah. Well, that I would say if, if, it was, <laughs> if it was really that cold, he might have come out with fewer wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know every all that shit shrink up you know he was smaller but less fewer wrinkles it's, oh my god <laughs> but it's, it's it's he's irish so he might have just fallen in drunk they don't know for sure well if he's irish he's got internal heating from all that whiskey and guinness exactly anyway. <laughs> exactly that hardly seems like a fair competition at this point <laughs> he was melting shit as he was swimming along <laughs> it took him 43 yeah. minutes 28 seconds to complete the mile long swim jesus christ apparently Ow. the water wasn't that cold it should have taken much less time if it was 23 degree water <laughs> Dude, if it... how old was he again? what's that how old was he 66 years old wow yeah po power to him man i can't even jump into a shower unless it's uh you know oh yeah that's of hell hot you know <laughs> yeah that's i mean that that's there's one for uh you know not aging that's a, he's uh he's staying young some way i don't know what the <laughs> cryogenically <laughs> yeah that's, that's something yeah cryogenically that's very likely that's because that's his next step i think jesus I, I have to ask, did, did we talk about the woman in a crochet kit last week? I don't remember a woman with a crochet. So no. I don't think we did, but I know I talked about it on at least one of my shows, but I, I feel it, it, it needs repeating here. It bears repeating. Yeah. A <laughs> Seattle woman uh, got more than she bargained for when she bought a crochet kit at a thrift store and discovered a kilogram of cocaine inside, authorities said. <laughs> 
not to interrupt you, Don, but Serenity, don't don't cover your camera with your hand because it looks like something completely different, and we could get blocked on YouTube for it. <laughs> Uh, the woman purchased the crochet kit uh, to crochet animal hats at around 3 p.m. Sunday in the city's Greenwood neighborhood, uh, the Seattle Police Department said in the news release. But when the crochet hobbyist opened the kit, she found a suspicious package that was encased in yellow rubber with 100% written on the outside. The item gave off an odd odor, police said. Ooh. The woman oh. immediately contacted police who who seized the suspicious package and had a big fucking party. <laughs> I'm imagining what the suspicious odor was. Right. <laughs> when I first read that part that says the animal, the, the woman, not the animal, she could have been, I don't know. The woman purchased the kit to crochet animal hats around 3 p.m. And I thought, and by 5.30, she had 743 of them. <laughs> she was going to town. <laughs> that will definitely a kilo of coke will definitely up your fucking crochet game that's for sure <laughs> well didn't gallagher make that joke back in the early 80s about like he doesn't he doesn't support uh using illegal uh, uh, illegal substances by people by members of society to do not wish to do so although he thinks it's a good idea for old people it makes the time go slow yeah there you, you go. give your that's grandma true. with a lid of columbia and a ton of yarn you get back in afghan to cover the garage Yep, there you go. I believe I believe that is a Gallagher quote there. <laughs> we know way too much Gallagher. That's that's the that's what I'm taking away from this entire story. <laughs> too that, much Gallagher. That's because Gallagher was a uh, a, a comedy genius and an intelligent uh, debater in his comedy, and then he yes. was with the sledgematic. Yeah, that sledgematic kind of destroyed him. That, was, <laughs> that, that, was that a, ruined the intelligence of his humor. Yeah, he, <laughs> well, even the sledgematic started out as intelligent humor, and then it just that's what became popular with all the uh, uh, idiots. And that's yeah. what, <laughs> and since society is made up of them, <laughs> welcome to the show. That's what, <laughs> that's what he got. All right, so uh, just to let you know, in the in the chat, Colin has stated that he was getting a chop, he was having a choppy connection, so he's re he's resetting his system. He'll be back. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for him so I can let him back in. Now, this next story, I have not covered on any of my other shows, but I wanted to, but it seemed a little dark, so uh, I'm going to bring this show. <laughs> so he's going to bring it here. This show up with it. <laughs> Plug it. We'll throw it here. An expectant father was killed when a device he was building for a gender reveal party exploded. <laughs> Sorry, uh, is this is this too much, or <laughs> am I the only one that's already laughing about this? I'm just wondering if the uh, the baby crowd is going to turn around and blast us like, well, that's what he gets for trying to reveal a gender when the baby hasn't chosen it yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess they should change that. It's not a gender reveal; it's a sex reveal please never because it's biological it's this is what they are sexually what exploded exactly what like what was he making like well let's see what let let's let's read on shall we let's uh, do it. <laughs> christopher peckney uh, 28 was assembling a device for his child's gender reveal party in the catskills town of liberty when it exploded just before noon sunday <laughs> Uh, Peckney was killed by a blast, and his 27-year-old brother Michael Peckney was injured. Police said uh, Michael Peckney was treated for his Peckney. Just had to say it again. Was treated for his injuries at a uh, an area hospital. Uh, New York State Police and New York State Police Bomb Disposal Unit <laughs> continued to investigate the incident Monday. Uh, the death is a late, latest in a string of tragedies blamed on faulty gender reveal devices in recent years why that's my question why you know damn you used right to give well. him a fucking cigar that was blue or pink that was enough you know you, you know the truth of what happened here is they were building something to be special and chris was extra excited about his first baby he or she coming into the world and was thrilled about it and the brother-in-law was the one that was actually at fault because he fucking tried to tim allen rewire that shit like, <laughs> <laughs> like we can make this bigger <laughs> <laughs> but i mean it's 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 tragic but at the same time so is this show 
<laughs> no, I, can, I, can, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can hear, I can hear the in-laws now talking to the to the distraught oh. mother to be and and wife, you know, about her their, yeah. her, their husband. It was, and it was just his I time. always told you, I always told you he was an idiot. <laughs> yeah, it was okay, just but his my time. big question is: Is it a girl or a boy? I know we need that information if we're going to read this far in. It was like, never it, revealed. It was never <laughs> revealed. Like, did if he it, go to the grave with this secret? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what are we going to do now? <laughs> we'll never out. know. <laughs> maybe, maybe pops out in the hospital looking for his father. Like, well, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> My dad blew up when he was trying to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a nickel for every time my dad exploded when he was trying to tell me shit. Hey. Maybe that explains what we happened. are all going to hell for this, but I'm cool with it. Maybe, maybe that's why my dad wasn't around growing up. I was told he, he died during but, your gender reveal. Yeah. I was told so he you died. still don't know. I was told he a aneurysm, but maybe it was a fucking gender cannon. <laughs> The gender cannon. I think that's a good episode title right there. <laughs> Killed by the gender cannon. What is a gender <laughs> party anyway? Normally, What's like that? a buddy, a buddy. That's the way I could describe it. Is a buddy of mine just recently uh, had a gender reveal for uh, what is for it? his first baby? And what Do they have an answer. What, what they did is because he was a baseball fan, they gave him a baseball bat and they threw a water balloon that was filled with either pink or blue, uh, like water coloring. And when he busted open, that's when he would find out if it was a boy blue or a girl pink. A lot of people do that in many different ways, whether it's a balloon or, or you know, something like confetti or something like that, where it's either pink for a girl, blue for a right, boy, right. purple for other. Um <laughs> But, but the, the thing with yeah, the water the balloon reveal is that's the thing with the about. the thing with the water balloon is nobody's going to fucking die. That's the, <laughs> yeah, I guess like, they paint the gold the blue and pink and can we can we shotgun? can we say that definitively? I mean, they didn't reveal what the the uh, gender machine was nor how the guy died. That's true. That's true. Because they, 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 they just start going, talking. Wrong. They just start talking about other things. Yeah. Because there was a, a Michigan water. man that was killed earlier this month when he was struck by shrapnel from a gender reveal cannon. <laughs> what kind of a baby shower? Yeah, yeah. Fucking cannon. A baby shower. So, that's the next. So, that's the next one. Somebody died in a baby shower. Yeah. Shrapnel <laughs> in a baby shower. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't take the, the can. Diaper? Don't take the cannon to the baby shower. That's never a good idea. <laughs> And I've heard of baby showers. They've been around for forever, but right. gender reveal that the same. I mean, I, I didn't even hear that, of that term a couple that, of years ago. It seems to be a new thing. It, it, it pretty much is. It's it's the it's the social media generation deciding they want to reveal, you know, like back in the day, you go to get the ultrasound for for a baby, and you either would want to know the gender in which they say the case they would tell you, or you keep it a secret till the baby is born, and then oh, surprise, you got a boy or a girl. Now right. it's everybody wants to know so they could make a TikTok video of somebody doing something that reveals either blue or pink so they know what they're being. Right, and that that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about the TikTok videos. It's about the YouTube videos. It's a, it's it's very little to do with the actual kid because now this little kid's going to grow up without a dad uh, because they wanted to. I don't know, sprinkle blue across the neighborhood with a fucking cannon. God, that's about the saddest thing I could think of too. I just thought of it as I was grabbing a bottle of water. That's about the saddest thing I could think of, too. Like, I, I went through this as a kid growing up, you know, because my dad died when I was six months old from a brain aneurysm. You know, people would be like, where's your father? And it's like, you know, some kids growing up would be sitting there saying, well, my dad died in the war or my dad, you know, was a deadbeat and ran away. This poor kid has to say my dad died trying to figure out what I was. <laughs> 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 I hope they got the genetic test before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah might want to get the, an IQ test from that child just to make sure genetics didn't follow suit. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Let's, let's move on to something a little, 
I, I, don't know what the, I don't even know how to describe this next one. 80 alligator heads have been seized uh, after pol a police search of a house in B Birmingham. West Midlands police, that bait Ew. pen's good. West Midlands police uh, <laughs> said the raid <laughs> took place at a property in Perry Bar this on uh, Thursday morning. And if I can get my computer to work, I'll tell you more. Uh, the joint investigation involved officers from the National Wildlife Crime Unit. Uh, I didn't know there was such a thing. That's NWCU, Special Victims Unit. Uh, and the bon, forces, bon. Uh, wildlife <laughs> crime officer volunteers. They're volunteers. That's why there's not a TV show about them. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, a statement said, we received information that the heads were, be <laughs> were being imported from abroad illegally and sold on through uh, uh, abroad. buyers all around the world at a large profit to the seller. Because that's why you sell things to make a profit. What was the broad's name? Uh, I don't know, but she gave head. That she gave a lot of head. <laughs> Eighty alligator heads. That's just the ones that are seized. Who knows how many people got head before that? Mm, that's true. That's it's almost guaranteed. Head around the world. Right. <laughs> how were they illegally so imported? Good. How do you how do you smuggle in eighty alligator heads? How do you even? I'm even more talking about, about logistics question. at this point. Even even more so now. I want to know the legal way of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything to declare? Eighty alligator heads. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want an alligator's head? <laughs> That, for that guy doesn't want an alligator i want two just for my front porch one on each side of the steps i was thinking I think it's all these tiktokers you can pull it out you can pull it, can pull it yeah. out on that that really bad date night that blind date with that you know guy that's like you know two steps away from like special needs that you really didn't want to date and he followed you home and it's like oh right, yeah sure i'll get you ahead close your eyes right yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Who wouldn't want an alligator head? And she's asking that of a man with a golden cock. <laughs> I just didn't know that Chris dated guys like that. It happened all the fucking time. Chris will date like any guy. He doesn't care. I don't yeah, I don't care. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we have wasted enough of your time. Uh this has been this has been uh what is it? The news buffet. Thanks again for listening. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, uh, Colin. Le leave me alone. The last guy I dated was an Olympic swimmer who had no arms and legs. His name was Bob. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That don't want, want, want. I dated a woman with no arms and legs. Her name was Carrie. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, water. Her name is fucked. Yeah. That was too fucking stupid. <laughs> what about her sister with one leg, Eileen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And their brother with no arms and legs had hung out in the front of the house all day called Matt. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I have something for after hours. Okay. Uh, okay, she's got something for after hours. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Serenity's uh, got your uh, after hours covered. I was going to make okay. Don sing a sea shanty, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll get it the next time, laddie. <laughs> <laughs> I totally want to see him do it, though. Maybe I should shut up. <laughs> so do I. That would be worth like it. great lighting on you tonight and everything. Like you're looking like a rock star over there. Yeah, we just gotta throw. We just gotta throw a Jack Sparrow hat on your head, and you know. I got this. You can, you can rock out the Wellerman. <laughs> I got this the other day for shits and giggles. <laughs> oh, there you it. go. Perfect. <laughs> You could do a oh Russian she san she's anti. <laughs> oh, I do like my vodka. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god. <laughs> Kristen with an L. I have there. lying around my house. <laughs> Yes, I will do a sea shanty duet with an alligator head. I will order one legally. Awesome. Awesome. From eBay. <laughs> On the hood of a car. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like the nah. horn? No, if I ever uh, Serenity knows this one. If I ever do a car joke, I'm gonna do what I always promise to do to Blind Mike, uh, who what isn't with us this week. I always, I always 
I always threatened to get a uh, a car and I would bolt with with a spring on it uh an extra long blind tapping pole, you know, the red the red tip with the ball on it and the white oh, white cane. Nice. Tap connected to the bump front bumper of the car and then put on dark glasses and just go driving while the thing's fucking bouncing in front of the car. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's that's I got something for you. All right, let's put together a sitcom where there's one person who is mentally handicapped or retarded and one guy who's deaf. Well, I happen to know a deaf guy who would fit the bill. And uh, the cool thing is he's in a wheelchair, which would make it even more funny. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't think this is going anywhere. I think it's funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think this will, this will go over well. Uh, yeah, you. <laughs> but go ahead. I mean, we, talk, we talked about, we talked about a gender reveal. Why not? We're already dumb shit creep. Well, yeah, it'd have to be yeah. a real deaf guy and a, a real handicapped person. So that way, that otherwise people would rip on you and they'd say, "Don't watch that program" or something, you know. But it could be a really funny sitcom, especially if a guy's like deaf and he's in a wheelchair. He's like, "Give me a ride. I'm not giving you over. I do all we thought, you know." And I'll just, and they could be roommates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine you like Bert and Ernie all over again? I'm loving the cringe right here where both <laughs> friends are into your springer face and Don walked away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was baited. Oh my god. I feel like I walked away at the wrong time now. No, you walked away at the exact right time. Perfect. Perfect. Colin, Colin was Colin was pitching a uh, a legitimate oh, no. handicap and, and deaf person sitcom. And the way he was pitching it, you walked away and both Ren and Serenity sat the whole entire time like this. <laughs> so in other words, I missed something I would have loved. <laughs> I, I had to go stir my kielbasa and sauerkraut <laughs> sometimes you gotta walk away and stir your kielbasa right guys look I, colin, i'll admit colin i'll admit i was with you i was fine with you talking about your, your sitcom and everything else until you gave the impression <laughs> oh, he did an impression. When, <laughs> you, when you when you did the impression of like uh uh what, what's the what's the deaf chick that used to solve murders and shit, Marilyn? Uh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know oh, how God. she tries to talk because even though she's deaf and like right. I, I talk like this. That's the impression Colin did. <laughs> Colin, in I case nobody's told hair. you today, in case nobody's told you today, Colin, I love you. <laughs> just i didn't even hear the, the i'm gonna go back and watch it after this is over just to see the impression but i know i know i'm gonna love it yeah and we're all going to hell <laughs> and we can kiss oh, yeah. any future sponsorships goodbye but right on <laughs> who needs them greatest thing ever right you get a deaf guy into the wheelchair oh, and then you get him Oh <laughs> handicap would be the funniest oh sitcom god. ever. Oh my god, I can't do it. <laughs> John, maybe maybe your director friend will make a TV series out of it for Colin. I, I don't know. I, I, there's some other bigger. people I can contact for that one, I'm sure. But you know. it would be bigger and better than Bert and Ernie ever thought. Oh hey Bert. Hey Bert. Yeah, Ernie. Hey, Bert. Oh my God. Get Bert. me. <laughs> Fuck with me. I've been watching the Muppets on Disney Plus. <laughs> oh my Love God. it. All right, let's get let's get this derailment back on track. Go ahead, Serenity. What was the what was the after hour thing? <laughs> oh, there's that. Sorry. Oh, um. Okay, so I have a family member who lives in. Pine Mountain Club, California. And is he a deaf guy in a wheelchair? Because Colin's looking for a star for his sitcom. No, Might he's be an trying upgrade. To find some alligator heads. <laughs> With some alligator heads. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! No. I want we an alligator cannon. I want an alligator that. cannon for a gender reveal party. That's what I want. An alligator gender mm -hmm. reveal cannon. Yes, we gotta build it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We... Go ahead, Ooh. Serenity. Oh my god. 
that's that's an awesome idea there. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so please tell got me. Off the rail. Right. <laughs> um, he was telling me that there's some secret military base up there, and that an alien landed there. So I looked it up on the internet. And I found some stuff about some movie that was put out about it. And then... Close Encounters of the Third Kind? No, <laughs> like, it was Good recorded. Movie. Like, the neighborhood... Okay, if you look up Pine Mountain Club, California, it was, like, 2005 and 2014 or something. And one of them was, like, videotaped. And the chick who videotaped it is my family member's neighbor... It was on her back porch and he's like talking to her about this and she posted it everywhere and they took her down and banned her. And since they're so far up in the mountains, she just doesn't have a cell phone, but they, they blocked everything to do with this whole alien encounter thing. So where are we on the whole, do aliens exist now? Because I mean, wasn't the, the, the government supposed to, while well, Trump was in office, actually, weren't they supposed to finally declassify some of the, uh, the UFO? Uh, I, think, I think they did, and they found it wasn't shit. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I think that they found that it was blacked out. They put black like, marker over everything important every time they declassify right. anything, so you can't identify what they're really talking about. Only bits you and can't. So right, we you're, can't, and you're can't talking can't about a show it. called UFO Seekers: Alien Encounter at Pine Mountain Club. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay is that reputable? I don't know. There's a, there's a few things about it. I'm just, I'm just looking it up. It's it's a you know, yeah yeah an Alien Encounter at Pine Mountain Club UFO Seekers movie. Uh, yeah, it's just there's. I'm not gonna look well, into I'm it confused. all right now, but well, no. I'm confused. was it a movie like like make believe or was it somebody filmed it? Right. That's what I have I'm no idea. About too. Okay, so I, I wouldn't use the term movie if it's something that I filmed. Well, with I'm talking phone. about U- UFO Seekers, Alien Encounter at Pine Mountain Club is a movie directed by Tim Doyle. Oh, okay. But is it about an actual incident? I don't know, because there have been a lot about Roswell. There have been a lot. Hell, I, I live right by Wright-Patterson Air, Air Force Base in, in Dayton, and that's that's a big – that's where they did the autopsy, apparently. I know but, where. You know, yeah. Yeah, I know. So where – like, I thought that we were going to hear more about this whole alien thing. We never hear anything, but there seems to be more and more and more proof that they're out there or they're not i mean like during lockdown i kind of went both ways now i don't know if they're i i will say the same thing i stated years and years ago as as far as like what's out there uh, you know uh documentary wise or or conspiracy theorist wise or 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 that guy with the weird hair that always goes aliens or whatever (laughs) else is concerned you know like all that i don't buy the uh, agent aliens history uh channel bullshit but right you know what what i'm saying is is that for my own personal belief system without any shred of evidence to me the universe is infinitely vast and every star in the sky is a galaxy and to think out of all those galaxies that we could see that there isn't at least one other planet supporting life i think is fucking arrogant i absolutely well I, I actually well, I believe they give a fuck about us no but there are aliens out there <laughs> I, I actually believe in the uh, douglas adams principle you know, <laughs> his, his theory is that there is no life life does not exist because we can all agree uh, that there is an infinite number of planets in the universe right right yeah and not all of them are inhabited by life so the number of planets inhabited by life forms has to be somewhat less than infinite and any infinite, any finite number divided by an infinite number is uh, nothing. So life on this, on this, uh, in this universe does not exist at all. Well, again, and 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 any people you see are just figments of your own deranged imagination. And what is the number? (laughs) 42. Well, see that. 42. Yeah, that's (laughs) 42. Well, see, I'm fine with that, but like, like life. Like I, said, like I said, when you say that there's an infinite number of planets, but like even in our own solar system, we have eight or nine, depending on which idiot you argue with that Pluto right. isn't a planet. And that's um, just what we found. 
Right. It, it, within our own solar system, there are exactly two planets that sit in the in the uh, the the life giving zone. I forget the exact term for it, but uh, yeah, you know, there is a, there is a weird term for it. It's something simple like fucking golden ring or some weird shit like that. Goldilocks. Gold the Goldilocks. There you go. Goldilocks. There you go. And it's just that, right. And that's Mars, which is a dead planet that we're trying to figure out if there used to be life on it, and us. Now, if every solar system in some way, shape, or form has that Goldilocks ring, it's, again, arrogant as fuck to think oh, yeah. after all those infinite numbers of galaxies, there isn't another life-sustaining planet. Don't forget uh, you, bro. I, I, ab I absolutely believe there is something else out there. It's whether or not they can reach us is the question. I don't think they even want to. I think any. Uh, why the fuck would they? <laughs> they think, looked around. We sent our I, own stuff out there, and they said, "Nope, I don't want any content." It's like getting that weird friend request from the porn stars that you know ain't fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what. <laughs> well, that's that's what like, us sending our stuff out in the universe is. They get it, and they say, "Nah, delete friend request because they, they know they, you're just a bot." You guys, have you guys heard of the crop circles in England? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know about these particular ones, but they they've been all over. There's thousands. There's probably tens of thousands. I, I went to England on a tour of the crop circles, so I've been inside those crop circles and have seen them and touched them, and um, it's pretty amazing. Um, I have seen some things that happen to winter wheat that um. I don't know how, um, really incredible. I I've seen them take a field and create sculptures out of the wheat. So it's not just the wheat being mushed down into patterns, but when you're actually in the crop circles, there will be sections of course, you know, where the wheat is all laid down, but keep in mind, it's not laid down just all flat it's actually woven yeah it's it's woven well you, you also need to keep in and mind and there's that... these sculptures that come up um so i mean to to make sculptures something that come like, up i've never seen that it's amazing i i did not oh. know that there's actual sculptures inside those crop circles until i went inside the crop circles um and looked at at these things and some of them were quite intricate some of them came would actually come up and they were just completely not like celtic knot work um like a three-dimensional celtic knot work that would come up and flare out it, it, it um almost like a fountain for lack of a better word um some really amazing stuff and if people whoops low battery mode um <laughs> If people were making those things, then they are doing the most incredible public art displays I think I've ever seen. I mean, it, it was really amazing, but you didn't really um, appreciate, it's hard to really appreciate them until you're there and you actually look and see what, um, how those things are made. I mean, whether aliens made it or not, I don't know, but, um, there's just a lot of incredible things that go on in this world and just so few people really know about it um, and talk about it. And if you do try to talk about it, they think you're crazy anyway, and then they block you like they did that girl who got the footage, footage that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. they, but you also have to remember when it comes to crop circles and stuff like that, there are also uh, crocheters out there with a kilo of cocaine. <laughs> so they could do that shit in under 10 hours come on like no, you get all coked like up that. you get all coked up there's no telling what you're gonna do in those crop circles you're gonna make some cool shit <laughs> i wonder Sorry. what the ghost needles are man <laughs> oh. oh my god that's horrible Sorry, you know I just thought monologue? that was a good place to be silly. But no, that's that's no, no, no. uh what's that? Do you remember the monolith? I can't even yeah, say that. The ones that kept appearing and disappearing and reappearing and yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that was happening during lockdown quite a bit. And like how would they put that in the ground and 
less than the time that we could put it in the ground. I mean, like, right. how the but, hell did they do that? And then it's there and it's gone. Like, I, I'm sure, I'm sure some something. of them. I'm sure some of them were absolutely fake. But there, there may very well have been some of them that were legit put there by something other than human beings. I don't. That's that's the thing about me. I I don't know this shit. I don't know if there's something out there. I don't know. I I try not to say I know anything for sure because I don't know shit. <laughs> well, I just I'm uh-huh. I'm coming from a point of like I think that the aliens are probably more like among us. Because, like, I kind of think of Earth as, like, the Noah's Ark or the zoo of the universe, where it's more like we took two of each animal from each planet that was about ready to explode, (laughs) and we're going to put them here. And we're a zoo. And in the zoo, we have entertaining. Sorry, I'm back for it. I don't care. So, like, if we're the zoo of the Earth, then aren't we all not really from here and we're all kind of aliens? course we are you just blew my mind man no, <laughs> Somewhere in no the you're, 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 going, you're going along the same lines as the south park episode where earth was just a reality show <laughs> where they like put a- all the different species together right? oh my it's god like but we are i i wonder yeah. look at a jellyfish like look at a jellyfish and explain to me that the jellyfish is not from a different planet yeah, there is so much. There is so much in, weird shit in our world. Jellyfish and squid. Jellyfish, octopus, and squid are not indigenous to this planet. Um, they've <laughs> looked at their DNA and at their their makeup with their uh, structure. They they don't belong here. The duck bill platypus. Delicious. Right. <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. I say that sounds good. Kind of like a turducken with fur. What about guinea hens? They aren't bad. I, I've eaten their eggs and I've eaten guinea hens before. It's been a while. It's been when I was a kid. My my uh, my grandmother used to raise guinea hens. What you want proof of aliens? Jumbo shrimp. <laughs> good jellyfish, octopus, and looked at their DNA and at their, their makeup with their instruction. Actually, that sounds good. I'm hungry. <laughs> it does. <laughs> They go good with your uh, with your uh, kibasi and sauerkraut, which you better be sharing, motherfucker. Right? Oh my God, you're you're calling to my German side now. What's that? <laughs> you're you're fucking kibasi and sauerkraut. You're you're calling to my German side right now. You better have made enough for the rest of the class, motherfucker. There, there's actually plenty, but it's gonna last me most of this week. That's 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 how I do on Sundays. I make some shit that's gonna last me a while. <laughs> that's how things are on this planet right we've got all these different critters all these different animals and stuff and we eat some of them and we uh we okay colin what did i tell you about making fun of handicapped people <laughs> <laughs> well that's fucked up <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> Listen back. You can't to tell it. if something went wrong with him for his connection. <laughs> it's that little Johnson. Bull and the horse and and even elephants. They just don't belong here. They're, they've got a different. Um, um, and then arachnids. Think about it. Those are the other. Only it's still going. <laughs> 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 the funniest part is he'd long since uh, like uh, silenced his microphone and it was still going. <laughs> he had to catch up. That's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. All right, I got a que- I got a question not to not to get off topic. I got a question for everybody that happened to me today. Uh, something that happened to me today. My my ex is uh, moving. She's being forced to move out of the place where she and my kids live. And I had to drop my kid off, you know, tonight uh, before the show. And uh, out of nowhere, my ex comes out of the room as I'm dropping, you know, one kid off and saying hello to my daughter who never comes to visits anymore. Um, and she hands me something asking me if I wanted, I could have it. It was the uh, cake 
cuttery pieces engraved from our wedding 11 years ago. What do I even do with this or what should I make of this? So she's offering something like this to me 11 years later. Take it to a blacksmith and turn it into a dagger. I already threw it away. I like I, I took okay. it, brought it home and tossed it in the trash. But I'm like, I'm I'm wondering the significance behind it. Like my ex doesn't do shit without some some meaning behind it. So what does one of those gotcha? What does what the hell does this mean? <laughs> I, think I can't take it. it I can't take it at face value that she was just being nice and saying, here, here's yeah. something from our memories, have it, you know, because I know she, that's not her. She wants to tell you that you can have your cake and go fuck yourself. Mm, probably <laughs> now, this is more of a question to the ladies here like like what should i read into this if anything was this a way um, of <laughs> Ren's, not, Ren's not with it she's like what an idiot <laughs> like, is, is, is this a blatant fuck you to me in some way shape or form or is there some no. meaning i should know I have, I have no idea i have never been married i didn't even know that they engrave the cake cutters with stuff although turning that into a dagger sounded really cool but turning anything into a dagger <laughs> would be really cool to me so i <laughs> I, I totally dagger agree, thing. I, I have a friend who got divorced and she ended up giving us their wedding goblets that were like really cool to give to him. Right. But just because she wanted to kind of move on. Right. Well, I'm cool with the moving on thing, but again, you know, our marriage, we got married June 27, 2010. It's, you know, the end of February 2021, we've been divorced since 2012. I honestly thought she already threw this shit away. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Well, if, if she's moving, if she's moving, she found it somewhere because she hadn't got around to throwing it away because she put it in a box that probably said mine and Chris's shit. And she said, I ain't opening that. And now that she's got to move again, she's going through and throwing out shit she don't need like you. Well, so, it's, <laughs> so I'm sorry. She came across that. That's what. That's those are the things that happen. Those are the things that happen. I wouldn't read too nice. much into it. I really doubt there's some strange motive in giving you that. Probably she found it. And said, "Ugh, I'd give that to fucking idiot. I don't need this." And then she saved it and gave it to you. Yeah, that's but probably if she, all that was the only the only I agree. The only flaw in your logic is she's got a box full of shit that's uh, that's marked as uh, me and Chris's. There are far more things from our life together that I would rather have than a fucking cake cutting set. <laughs> she, 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 kept, she kept your butt plug is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I want my butt plug back. Right. The the the, the monogrammed, it was, <laughs> the monogrammed it was wedding butt plug. It was shaped like R2D. Was it white? Damn it. Was it? White. It was. <laughs> Animal white. It's a collector's item. <laughs> it's actually Lucasfilm Limited. <laughs> Autographed by Kenny Baker, the guy who played R2D2. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> somebody took it in the dark side, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh my God! <laughs> At least the gender was revealed. Hey, look, this was the droid I was looking for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm surprised they don't. Weren't we it. talking about aliens? What the fuck happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, my ex is an alien, so it still fits the story. <laughs> Legit. Yeah, I can get on board. <laughs> It was just a discussion, man. (laughs) The dog walker's friend is allowed to join us. (laughs) Awesome. Wait a minute. Am I the dog walker or the friend? Oh. Yeah, I wasn't sure what that meant either. Are you the dog? Okay. It's just. Yeah. I'm the wiener dog. <laughs> I'm the one with the shakes because I can't poop in public. <laughs> Speaking of which, I should check my schnitzel. <laughs> He's got to go stir it. Lady Gaga thing. Did you guys all hear about that with her dog walker thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. That is so weird. That makes no sense. You know what? I'm not. woman turned it in. 
I'm no fan of Lady Gaga, not, uh, you know, as a celebrity, as a human being, like really she's kind of trash, but hearing that somebody stole her dogs and murdered her dog walker to get these fucking dogs, that's just fucking all kinds of wrong. No, they, she's expected to live. Oh, she is expected. I heard she died. <coughs> it's a guy. Oh, it was a guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And never no. mind, fuck her and her dogs. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, she's she got her dogs back, but she's in Italy right now filming. So it's been verified through other sources that went down to see the LAPD that these dogs were turned in by a woman who's completely unrelated to the crime. No other information. That's all I really have. How do you not relate it to the crime? You just happen you have to the dog walking down the street or something. And it's like, oh, yeah, these are Lady Gaga's. I'll give them back to her. I right? hide. She wasn't involved. Yeah, that's a little different. It's <laughs> <Yeah. This is laughs> really weird. Was this there is... a reward? Mm-hmm. Half a million Half... dollars. Can, oh, you, yeah, see, yeah, can yeah. you see Lady Gaga in her fucking like meat bikini costume going down the street, ta- tacking fucking <laughs> moss dog? posters to fucking <laughs> electrical you know, when it comes a, to your half pet, a million dollar yeah. reward see that's the thing that they, they kidnapped the dog and then collected the reward that's a, that's why you're not they didn't ask for ransom they just held the dog long enough for the reward to get high enough yeah right well see, that's, that's it way to do it well i mean <laughs> let, let's be i i have to be fair for a minute i mean is there any proof that when the, the 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 dog walker got shot, that somebody picked up and stole the dogs, and the dogs didn't yeah. just run away? No, it was a robbery. It was a robbery. There, there's definite proof that the dogs were yeah. mapped. Yeah, there's surveillance cameras outside of all those houses. There is tons of footage. And it was some old lady picking up the dogs, and she's the one who turned them in. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> that's doggies, horrible man. dirty no. dog i hear that it was two males but i don't know anything more than that now you're just it's assuming. really odd that they this woman who is unrelated to the crime has the dogs how on earth did she get the dogs because they the won't two, release that information because the two guys who killed uh who shot up the, the dog walker and stole the dogs were actually the old lady's sons <laughs> we're under 18 or something i don't know i'm I, doing it to protect my kids yeah probably something like that it's one of those situations like you think back to like uh the, what's coming to mind is like uh an episode of sons of anarchy where uh two kids from the ghetto like had stolen from sam crow and Sam Crow tracked down where they were at their mama's house, and mama whooped both their asses and gave back to the to the the, the, uh, the biker gang what was stolen. You know, that's yeah. all I'm envisioning right now. They come home with the dogs. Look, mama, what the fuck you doing with them dogs? Keep them. <laughs> I bet that's what happened. Probably, yeah. You know? <laughs> kind of makes sense. So bad that her dogs were taken though. The thing is, though, I mean, they they shot a person, so the cops have to do something to, um, you know, charge <laughs> the people in this. They can't just let them off the hook. So I'm wondering how are they going to do this? Because Lady Gaga, I remember she said no questions asked for the reward money. Mm-hmm. But the police don't care about that. They they will charge somebody so they can send a message that this type of behavior is unacceptable. Well, they got to do the paperwork on it anyway, so you might as well get the job done. But right, because LAPD be cool with it if they don't see some results. Right, the community is going to be like, "Hey, this ain't cool to be ripping out people's dogs and shooting people." The cops got to do something here, you know. The the thing that wrap that I can't wrap my head around, and again, maybe because I'm not that violent of a person, but like stealing dogs was it really that serious that you had to gun down somebody like were the dog really i don't care i don't care if elvis's dogs was it really worth that much to fucking have a, a possible murder rap or manslaughter rap on your fucking permanent record right i mean come on these are dogs is it really that rough during covid is it really that rough 
Uh, <laughs> come uh, on. After, <laughs> after the sitcom pitch. <laughs> let's, let's not do lame puns, Colin. Co- Colin's all over the place tonight, and I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm the I'm the weird guy of the show. <laughs> Somebody put Colin back in his shell. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Bring him out. He's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> I like Don. <laughs> oh, oh my god! I, I agree with cool. everybody. I, I, again, I'm not a I'm not a huge uh, Lady Gaga fan as a person or or what she does celebrity wise, but I am happy to hear that the dogs are okay and were returned, and I'm happy to hear the dog walker is going to make a recovery from being shot. But I just yeah, don't wrap yeah. my head around the even the reason that this had to be a thing celebrity celebrity yeah. fans do weird shit celebrity whatever the hell they are do weird shit the people that follow these people and worship them they're capable of some weird shit all the time true <laughs> Well, I, I only hope, that the I only hope were... someday I'm famous enough to have weird people kidnapping my dogs <laughs> keeping <laughs> me stinks <laughs> <laughs> That's why the dogs return. They shit on the fucking mama's uh, <laughs> plastic covered I, fucking check couch. <laughs> I, I just want to set up a camera and try to capture video of somebody trying to kidnap my dog. Holy shit. Homer would tear them to pieces. <laughs> Homer doesn't like people that are friendly. <laughs> I think I'm the only people that can grab. I'm the only person that can grab his paw and he doesn't bite the living shit out of. Oh my god! Love to see awesome. somebody kidnap Homer. Yeah, I have a basset hound, and they, I can't get him to get off the couch unless I got a treat, or I say you won't go for a walk. Otherwise, he don't move, man. Anybody stealing him? <laughs> Homer, Homer seems very docile right now, but uh, as soon as it, it, if I let him run wild, he's going to run freaking wild because he is a he's a psychotic. Uh, it's it's pit, amazing pit bull husky mix. It's Ooh. amazing. It's amazing the 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 personality of a dog that that automatically goes against their own breed. Serenity remembers I used to have an all white Akita, and Akitas are are a breed that are known to only like the people in the immediate home, and nobody else, no other pets, no other people. Yeah. They they don't like it. They only like the family they live with, and that's it. Except my Jack. That motherfucker would let all of you walk in the house, rob me blind, and he would just try to get you to rub his belly. He did not give two fucks about shit. You, you <laughs> am I wrong? wrong. <laughs> Serenity, am I wrong? Jack was not too wrong. He was, he was such so a lo- cool. He was playing like football and stuff. Oh, like man. he was a cool dog. <laughs> Gotta admit. See, Homer, Homer, Homer's, Homer's personality is the only thing that saves him because he, he has a certain look he gives me. It's like, okay, I won't kill you today, Homer. But no, he is. <laughs> Jack, Jack's biggest personality flaw, and Serenity might remember this one too. And to answer your question, uh, when mom left uh, Callahan, she had given him to another family that had young kids. And Aww, I know okay. he, he had a good life after that. But the biggest thing that Jack did when I first moved to Colorado and, and all, and Jack would le- sleep in my room, and, and Serenity remembers this as well. And Jack had a bad personality when it came to sleeping in a room with you because he would literally rip a fart and then wait by the door waiting for you to realize that it happened because he wanted to be the first one to escape. <laughs> mm-hmm. I kid you not. He Middle of the night, it'd be dead quiet. All you hear is... <sighs> And then he'd get up, go to the door, and look at you, and wait. <laughs> 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 yeah. He was saying, you, "I got to, I got to pee. Let me out." No, it wasn't. Yeah. I got to pee. It's, he knew what 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 that was going to be, and he knew we were going to go running. Mm-hmm. As soon as you caught whiff, you were out the door, and he's happy as a clam. Like, ha ha, I got you. Like he really was. <laughs> it was a running gag for that dog. A running gag. Yeah. yeah, very much a running gag. <laughs> and now he taught it to those kids. Thanks a lot. Come like, on. And them kids, them kids are they like adults and run. probably doing that to their girlfriends. <laughs> Man, that's horrible. Right. Well, it looks like we, we aren't getting rudder tonight. So we're we're gonna do another week without uh what's the uh, what was this segment again? What's your effing deal? We're we're gonna yeah, do another effing? week without that. 
Well, apparently, like uh, what he texted me, uh, I don't know if he texted it to everybody. Uh, he was saying that he had uh, some connection issues uh, with the internet and he can only do audio only, but anything requiring video won't even connect. Okay. Well, why didn't he hear for audio? I don't know. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> I can but do I audio. Gotta... Okay. Well, come aboard with audio. That's that's cool. I mean, what the hell? I hate to say, I hate to be the party pooper, but I've got a bail. So before I do, let me get two things out of the order here. Order number one, let me go ahead and give my outro. If you enjoyed this video in any capacity, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, comment, subscribe, check out all the other great podcasts of Breaking the Fourth Wall Entertainment. Uh, and of course, if you prefer your podcast in audio only format, just check us out on Anchor.fm, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Pandora, iHeartRadio, or wherever quality podcasts can be heard. Second piece of or uh business i have to get underway is if his audio will allow him colin take it away with some good news absolutely and i'll catch you guys later hey have a good night chris if we're talking about dogs and animals and things like that uh, i found a story about a dog uh it says here on uh, today.com there's a dog discovered lying on its late owner's chest in the snow mm. and apparently he, this dog has found a new home um Further on says, uh, when California resident Lisa Lamelli f- arrived at an animal shelter to create a cattle dog, or to meet a cattle dog named Baby Dog, the staff at Placer County Hospital Services warned that the dog was traumatized and pretty shut down. On January 31st, a search party had found Baby Dog in the snow, protecting the body of its owner, David Deshawn, who died after the car after his car got stuck during a snowstorm in a rural area near Sacramento, California. Deshaun, Baby Dog, and his other dog, Buddy, had been missing for several days when Buddy made it to a neighbor's house, barking and clawing at the door for help. That helped the searchers know to continue looking in the area. Meanwhile, Baby Dog stayed on her owner's chest, trying to keep him warm and tried faithful companionship until the very end. Wow. wow. Um, so Lamelli wow. happened to be neighbors with Deshaun's daughter, who had uh, galvanized the community to search for her dad and his beloved dogs. She told Lamelli it was comforting to know her dad didn't die alone and how heartbroken she had felt that she couldn't take his dog since work keeps her from away from home so much. Oh, wow. Um, she was telling me, no matter how bad I want them because they're a part of my dad and I love these dogs, if I can't give them the attention they need, it's not fair for the dog. I have to think about what's best for them. And that was very selfless of her. I told the Today Report. Uh, while she learned about baby dog's loyalty to her late owner, Lamelli started thinking about someone else who could benefit from that kind of devotion. Her mom, Peggy Morrill. Morrill has been battling cancer during this pandemic just a few months before her diagnosis she lost her own loyal dog a black lab named rail Raylin, who always stayed by her side Morlin longed for a new dog but lacked the energy to find the right one um i said shauna would you mind if i call the shelter and tell them that i'm interested in meeting baby dog because i think he would be perfect match for my mom and then recalled asking the sean's daughter uh she said, oh my gosh, yes. So we set it all up. Uh, on February 8th, Lamelli entered the shelter's play yard, expecting baby dog to be depressed and potentially standoffish after this ordeal. She sat on a bench and offered baby dog, can you come and let me pet you? The amazement uh, to everyone in the yard, baby dog came right over and put his head on her lap. Aww. Well, that is pretty touching. And that is really great to hear that... um. Somebody had that kind of a loyal dog that comforted them right till the very end, you know, and then now they have a new home to help someone else's life. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we, we hope that uh, happened in this world, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's just crazy um, that it snowed in Sacramento. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's like... I'm, I, I'm impressed with your takeaway from that, Serenity. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm still in the first sentence of the story. I'm sorry. And he, he's going slow, remember? Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
no that that's that's a really cool story though i love stuff like that because i i'm a dog person i've always been a dog person and dogs are just they're wonderful to have i've always had one i miss dogs i've had uh right yeah it's 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 really it's really sweet and that's that's why we treat animals well when we take them under our care we're supposed to that's why when i see people mistreating them uh i I'd, I'd like to mistreat those people oh hell yeah okay so this dog has now chosen his new owner which is really what i thought was sweet about it in the right. end was he was with his owner but then i'm sad like wow he lost something that meant the world to him so for this dog to be able to kind of like choose his new owner i mean that's right. pretty cool yeah that they, means, you, you mean, have a new world it's a new world now because as you the dog's owners be kind of become their world yeah you right. to lose that and be able to find it again it's awesome yeah. well sure for a dog and a, the companionship a dog offers to a human being um yeah. when they make that yeah. connection it's like family, right? And then when that person dies and the dog's left all alone, they're like, wow, what do I do now? Kind of thing, I imagine, in the dog's mind. And then all of a sudden, someone else comes along and they, they can feel things and, and they sense things that we don't understand as human beings. And so when they feel the emotion come from a certain person and they're able to latch onto that person and say, okay, I feel you, new assignment. I'm your, I'm your dog. I'm your dog. I'm here. I'm your dog. You know, yeah. and that's, that's special. Yeah. I have to agree. I love my two dogs and they're Shiba Inu. So they're pretty intelligent and both of them know how to say, I love you. Like they go, wah, wah, wah. And so we all like, love W. Give W's Give W's crap behind the ears for me. I miss him. I will. Oh my God. He's such a good boy. I love him so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, it's nice I, connection with animals. I have like a huge yard. This is just how great my dog is. Okay, so I have this gigantic one acre yard for him to run in. I have never once had to pick up shit. Hmm. Like he stashes it somewhere or something. Like, you ever <laughs> like considered he doesn't himself. actually poop or he, he can use the toilet? Just <laughs> <laughs> saying, like. Whatever what? he's doing biodegrades, man. It's Keep working. doing it, buddy. You're doing a hell of a job. <laughs> you know, for a little dog, though, Dubby is smart. Uh, he's a smart little shit. You know, I, like the first day I met him, he, like trying to shake my paw and stuff, and he was just like boing, 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 bouncing all the place. He was such a happy little dog and just smart as a tack. You tell him, go get this, go get that, or you throw a ball or something, he's on it. He's right back to you. He's, he's great. I miss your dog. <laughs> yeah. They're outside now because of Berlin being allergic, but they come inside oh. when it's cold. Mm, I know. Well, they love it outside. They have a really pimp ass dog house that matches the house, and <laughs> like they're. I brought them in the other night because it was it was going to be like eighteen <laughs> degrees or something. So I brought them in the house, thinking it's too cold out there, and they kept me up half the night asking to go outside. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll let you out. I gotta... Come back in. You're back. Hey. So, do you have any pets? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I never left. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't get the cool screens that you guys have. I just haven't heard you in a while. So, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh just listening. No, just saying I got to run. But So, I'll see you guys later. All right. Well, have a good night. Thanks, friend. Thanks, friend. Okay, back on topic. All right, yep, Colin. You, what what else you got for us? We'll do, we'll do a couple more before calling it a night. We got a couple more. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, another thing I saw here was on GoodNewsNetwork.org. There's a story about Gary Sinise. Or, Sinise. Uh, Gary Sinise. Uh, yep. You remember as a uh, Lieutenant Dan yep. on Forrest Gump, the guy who was in the wheelchair, but he wasn't deaf. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks for that. He's involved in a in a in a push or a uh, culmination of uh, what's been launched as a mental health network for veterans and first responders. 
So I thought that's kind of positive, you know, Gary Sinise, um, he's very well known for that part that he played in that movie. In fact, it mentions it here in this interview um, that they're talking about this. Um, but I can only imagine how much PTSD is going on with the people with the first responders. Like all of a sudden they were yeah. have to be afraid of this virus and everything and, you know, still do their jobs. You yeah. know, I mean, that's, that's a lot of anxiety and stuff. So for them to launch a mental health network for these people, I think is huge because the only way you can deal with something in your mind and in your psyche is to talk about it and to face it, you know? Um, and so they've got mental health professionals that are going to help the veterans and first responders. I think that's awesome. Oh yeah. I Absolutely. agree. Yeah, I do have to say that it would be very traumatizing no matter what you're doing. If you're working in a hospital, like, praise to all the first line people but i also know people that do like the maintenance on the air filters at hospitals that's yeah, front like line me. too <laughs> <laughs> exactly <Like me. laughs> he knew exactly where i was going with that i'm like they're first responders too yeah. but uh, i mean i mean i don't because i'm a i'm a contractor i don't go into rooms with patients now, when I actually worked maintenance at, at, at a hospital, at a full-fledged overnight hospital, now I just do mostly doctor's offices. I, you know, a, a couple of freestanding emergency areas, but not anywhere that houses patients long-term. Yeah. When I worked in that arena, I did have to go into the room. So even the maintenance guys at hospitals, they have to go in there they have yeah. to go in they have to go in and work in rooms that are negative pressure because they know there's something airborne in there they also have to go into rooms where they don't know yet and that's doctors nurses uh, cleaning staff maintenance everybody that all the support staff as well as the doctors and nurses because there are plenty of people that work at hospital that aren't called doctor or nurse and they are just as much on the front line as everybody else and uh, you know it's right it's it's great when people do things for them though you know it, it absolutely is right well that's the I, thing you know i mean um those people take care of all of our long loved ones um maybe not yeah. directly like the doctors and the nurses but they're the ones who are cleaning the floors if someone coughed on the floor and then it gets tracked all over the place well guess what anything they stepped on if somebody drops their paperwork or drops their pen and they pick it up they may have just yeah. touched something that had covid you know so the, even the janitor matters oh there, you know, there, there are a crazy amount of regulations and stipulations that we never had to deal with in that field before both in maintenance and housekeeping and nursing and the, the whole all the way across the board is a, it, it's it's kind of a whole different game now because everything yeah is it's like a heightened alert yeah, potential spread right it's the heightened alert now we're yeah. all aware because I work in the food industry, so we're constantly yeah. battling viruses and bacteria and things like that. So I have to be on top of all my temperatures of my refrigeration units, wipe down the tables with a bleach cloth to sanitize everything, make sure there's no food particles on dishes, um, dust even. You know, we don't. I, if I have to do something constructive wise in the kitchen or something, I have to cover everything thing with plastic you know so that the, the dust is going to fall on something or splatter on something if i'm painting or whatever you know it's it's and then every day i wash my hands probably a hundred times a day because that's how you battle viruses and bacteria because you keep right. things clean keep them sterilized you know um but there's in the beginning of this covid thing i was by the, myself in that kitchen i had one waitress who was boxing the food and everything and then um and then a person at the bar that was taking care of the customer um, with a mask and everything and having them separated six feet apart waiting for their food um, and that's all we could do was take out you know that yeah. was that was creepy yeah. for me I never had to deal with that with it just me and skeleton crew like that and it was yeah. a whole month yeah. by myself making every meal and yeah. so yeah and then after that I had to do all the prep for the next day oh my god that was a yeah. lot of work but I understand where those first responder people are coming from because at that point it was all on me and I had to make sure that everything was right. sterilized and that a lot of a lot of essential workers are the same way because essential worker isn't just properly. medical field because it if someone got sick, it's yeah. No, yeah. it's not. You know, I mean, there's people who they don't have to cook and they have to call a restaurant in order to eat. Yeah. You know, there are people that just don't have the facility to cook because maybe they're homeless and they got a hotel room all of a sudden, but they're yeah. like, oh, I don't. I mean, now, but I don't have anywhere to cook anything. 
there, know, there, so are, pe- there are people in, on, there are people in there grocery are. stores, beggars, cashiers. I mean, most of them aren't making a whole lot more than minimum wage, but yet they're out there and have been from the get-go of this thing, probably more susceptible to anybody else because there aren't a lot of people go into a hospital and piss and moan about wearing a mask but a grocery store oh yeah they'll have a fit because they know that the the grocery store maybe has a security guard probably doesn't and the hospital has security and police officers there yeah so so grocery stores that's where you're going to get the people that are going to uh, have a absolute hissy fit about wearing a mask the public service that's that's a big part of essential workers that often get left out Mm mm-hmm very true right and then in the industry their jobs are just as important uh, to making sure we stop the virus and control it just yeah. as much as the doctors or the nurses or the janitor you know all, everybody has to do their part for us to beat this thing down right um, and keep it away from our families and contain it you know and that's why i'm I, i'm happy to hear that this uh curious uh he went set up this foundation um called the avalon network um, and apparently it's a pro it was established in 2011 and it, apparently it's approaching um, its 10th anniversary in June um, and then they've got set up for all kinds of thousands of first responders um, and military veterans and people that are, are struggling with substance abuse um, awesome. and post-traumatic stress so yeah wow. I mean hats off to Gary Thanks for doing that, especially since he's like the poster child for people um, with issues with stuff like that, with post-traumatic stress due to his part in that movie. Yeah, People recognize that and they remember him for that. So he's the perfect yeah. guy to do it. Yeah, I think you know, Gary, Gary Sinise yeah, is great. a very underrated actor too. The man's fantastic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it says here an estimated 30% of the first responders in the U.S. are dealing with depression and post-traumatic stress. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's a lot of people in our in our workforce you know um so everybody out there you got a friend or or a family member that's a first responder that's dealing with that post-traumatic stress or the anxiety and the fear of this whole thing we've been dealing with reach out to them you know but give them a hug let them know hey you know you're my brother you're my sister you're my cousin whatever you're a human and i care you know let them know that you don't have to have that fear that anxiety things are going to get better and thank you for being a first responder, whoever you are out there, because, you know, our lives matter and they matter to me. They matter to you. And and we got to stick together through this crap because it's only going to get better if we do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, I don't know. That's pretty much where I'm at. That's what I've uh, I looked up today. Um, All right. Well, that, that, that was oh, awesome. I appreciate it. It's always good yeah, to end this craziness on something really positive enough, uplifting. <laughs> right 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 and, and uh, to all our listeners out there if you got some problems and you're stressed or you're having anxiety check out your community there's probably a community center there in your area wherever you are that there's somebody who's a counselor who is willing to talk to you to help you straighten out your own anxiety your own post-traumatic stress um don't be afraid to reach out you know we're all human sometimes you need somebody to lean on right i think they even wrote a song about it you know <laughs> so so uh, if you got something going on in your head and you're not sure how to deal with it and you're scared and you're freaked out and you're frustrated and you got anxiety, talk to somebody. You know, we're all in this together. Absolutely. It's a friend of mine, uh, uh, Andrew Metakaitis, who hosts the uh, TV show here in Dayton, Gem City Tonight. Uh, you're not alone and you never will be. That is what, yeah. I like that. That's but it. anyway, well, that is, that's, uh, are we good? I think that's our show for the, for the, this week. And it's a, couldn't have ended sooner. <laughs> oh. Oh, Colin, th- well, thanks very much for everything. I'm going to give you a chance. You have uh, any information you want to throw out there before we head out? Um, yeah. Uh, you guys, anybody wants to communicate with me, you can leave me a message on Facebook. You can um, contact me at Colin Washburn at gmail.com. I'm on YouTube and I'm on Facebook. So hit me up. Um, you got something to say? You got a message you want to tell Don or you want to tell Serenity or any of the other wackos that we hang out with here? Um, hit, hit me up or or Don, he'll give me the message. All right. <laughs> Serenity, you good? You got anything? I'm good. Any, any final good thoughts you want to leave us with? You are not 
the boy's or girl's father. Okay. I am so thankful for that. I just, because I don't want a cannon <laughs> blowing me up. <laughs> <laughs> this has been another fantastic episode of Breaking the Fourth Wall. Thank you guys for listening. If you want to find me specifically, you can always go to thelife1069.com. You can uh, check me out on Facebook at The Life 1069 or at Don Smith Comedy on Twitter. Uh, the life radio show be sure to check it out it's it's a it's a lot of freaking fun so is the fourth wall breaking the fourth wall is definitely fun but the life radio show a little bit more fun for me but (laughs) (laughs) i'm kidding i love them they're both my children i love them both equally Uh, (laughs) and also be be sure to go if you if you have to be tv it's a free app uh check out uh, the, the six feet below hell and uh, the, I think that's about it. I was going to make another announcement, but I'll save it for later just because I'm a dick like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Serenity, Colin, thanks for sticking around to the end of the show. Uh, Chris and Ren, you're quitters, but I love you anyway. Have a great night, guys. <laughs> night.